Hey everyone, it's just Python today. Well, not today, but this video. And uh, this is the second part of the bonus video, and I figured I'd just do it by myself because, well, I haven't really had much one on one time with everyone, I guess you'd call it. Anyway, we're uh, starting off this video with how to get sickened. And how you do that is after you rescue Snake from the guest house, you go straight back to the com, uh, the communications base, and go to the little red X, and then you get this pleasant little call, and uh, we get to talk to Sigint again. He's always one of the most pleasant conversations. You could say that he needs someone to get there covertly. Oh, he apparently knows everything. He is omniscient. Never would have known. Of course, he is doing this for purely selfish reasons. Couldn't expect much more out of him, right? Right? Anyway, let's get out of here. After calling him up in the comm base, we get the the spy report in the town that Zigant has been spotted. Now, uh, when we go to the town, you'll notice that quite a few of the paths are blocked off. This is blatant railroading so that the game tells you, no, you're not taking the easy way out on this one. Go the long way. Take the path of most resistance. Of course, if you're a decent shot with Mark 22, this isn't even a problem anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it's, uh, Interesting to note that the designers of the game decide to not let you do anything fun, like sequence breaking, or getting to places fast, you know, that kind of thing. Of course, my aim is still something to be desired there. But it's alright. Now, uh, Sigint is actually in one of the places on the map that we haven't explored in the game so far. Or that I haven't shown off yet. This is purely my fault. Uh, I could have gone here at any time, but I didn't think to. But hey, that's what bonus videos are for, right? Where we're going is the actual, actually the third level on the town. The, the highest we've explored before was this one, the second one. But now we get to say, get to see the heights of the the town while uh, recruiting our good friend Sigint. As you can see, right out this door, it's a straight shot to the right. And there he is. He's he's lodged in a corner, so it might be a little easy just to pass him by. But, you know, orange vest and also it's kinda hard not to notice him. Nice, uh, stroking the eagle there, Roy. The ego, not the eagle. What am I talking about? Stroke the eagle all day long. Anyway. Now we have Sigint, and Roy says the most pathetic thing he could. 
Meet us at the truck we're using at a base. Yes. The most organized military known to man. Anyway, Sigint is, of course, an engineer and an arms specialist. He has an S in the tech score. He comes equipped with a Gakko and body armor. So, he's a pretty tough bastard. Next up, we find ourselves in the harbor, because we're going to get us a ghost. Or Sokolov. Whichever the case may be. You'll see in a few, a few moments that he actually does introduce himself again as ghosts. Because... I don't know. This is, of course, after the point in the game where he's revealed to be Sokolov, so the whole thing makes no sense. Who's that? To uh to unlock this this spy report, you have to have uh just well, you just have to rescue Snake. And I'm actually lying. You don't actually have to do the Metal Gear fight before doing this, so we technically wouldn't know it's actually Sokolov. But of course, you guys know. Now, as I was, as I was kind of saying, this conversation, depending on when you get it, could either make a lot of sense or very little sense. If you, if you do this after the Metal Gear Raja fight, then of course it'd make the least sense possible, and Ghost would still be Ghost instead of so Sokolov, and and Snake would, uh, yeah. Nah. Really, it's best not to think about it. Of course. Why wouldn't NASA have a Soviet spy? Makes all the sense in the world. But of course... So Kalav is ultimately asking us to perform a fetch quest for him. So, of course, we have to do this immediately. Not so skillful avoidance of Snake's probing questions like Who? Why? What? Metal Gear? And of course, Snake is as non-committal as could be, but of course you know he's going to do this. The next step on this long journey is going to the power substation. In all reality, it should be going back to the uh, silo entrance, but... Ooh, let's just skip that part, because we don't really need to. All that we do there is find out that we're... Stop it, Snake. All that, we're, all that we find is that there's a locked door we need to get behind and that the frequency we need to open the door is here because of course it's one of those key lo uh, key or lockless doors and what we're doing here is just interrogating the two guards near the uh, the switchboard and voila there is a frequency now this guy this guy has given me so much trouble in trying to record this, so I'll take every opportunity to overdose them on tranquilizers. Again, we have to go back to the power sub or sorry, not the power substation. We have to go back to the silo entrance and go to the door next to where we first fought Null. Here is the uh, the door where the frequency actually matters.
Yep. Those sure are numbers. And of course, Roy is the gatekeeper. Anyway, once we get that open, there's the blueprints right there, and we are finished with the silo entrance for now. After we hit the blueprints, a suspicious person, guess who that could be, appears in the plant. So, let's go. Uh, Ghost slash Sokolov appears within the control room that Jean was in during the cutscene after Rasha. So that's where we're headed. We didn't get to see it. Well, I showed it off from downstairs, but I didn't go upstairs ever in the main playthrough, so here's how you get to it. You just go up the ramp and through a couple doors and hey, what do you know, there it is. And there's Ahsoka Love, cowering in fear. You know, the usual day for him. No, Roy, that snake. You've you've kind of been working with him this entire time. Ah, whatever. We asked him this before, but of course, you know, excellent deflection. But at least now we're getting a straight answer out of him. And of course, he's doing this because he wants to slow down what's going on with Metal Gear, I guess? It was I was under the impression that Metal Gear was already on the rocket by the time we got down there anyway, so it really doesn't matter either way. Again, it's probably best not to think about this sort of thing. And at least he's honest about his shortcomings. And the fact that he's a manipulative bitch. But I guess he has a heart of gold. Of course, by all means, he should be dead, but, you know. Que sera, sera. He is also an elite engineer with an ass in technical score. If you're looking to get 99 points in uh, in tech score, Sokolov and Sigint are an excellent way to get there. Uh, I didn't show how to get Eva because, quite honestly, I am perplexed. The directions I was trying to follow are not in the slightest helpful. So, really, you can use a code, but there's there's a way you can get her in game if you are so inclined and more patient than I am. It involves a crap ton of steps. I'll of course be posting what I know in the thread. In fact, I'll be posting how to get everyone in the thread in case you feel like using it as a guide, I don't know. I don't judge. I'll also be posting stats of everyone in the thread and what everything means eventually. I'll get around to it. Eva comes equipped with an SVD if you use a code. I'm not sure exactly what you get if you uh, recruit her outright, but you know. Also, she is using the exact same model as she was in MGS3, so that's a nice touch. Even though you'd think she might want to take the clothes off and wash them at some point. I don't know. Hygiene over six years team send tends to deteriorate. Next up is Jean. Jean is relatively simple, if not retarded, in how you get him. In order to get Jean, you have to recruit 200 soldiers. 200. This may be confusing to, to players because you can only hold hundred, right? This is HQ. The way you get Jean is actually to recruit a hundred, let them go, and then recruit a hundred more. And this all has to happen within one playthrough. You have to do it, you can't do it with a new game, and a new game plus, or anything like that. It has to be a one playthrough. Which makes this incredibly, 
incredibly painstaking to get him. Again, you can use a code, and that's much easier. Of course, they reward you for actually getting the uh, the player, the sorry, the characters through actual gameplay, because their stats are actually lowered when you use codes to grab them. Now, as you've been seeing me flaunt all over the place in the prison here, Gene has his Bowie knives that he uses in his boss fight. And while you're auto auto aiming or auto lock on, he does this neat little neat little thing. Come on, who runs like that? That's that's not gonna come, that's gonna be really really uncomfortable. After him comes Gako. Gako, of co of course, comes equipped with uh, Gakos. Yeah, I think the guy's obsessed. But it, but we don't talk about his problems around here. He's got plenty. Trust me. Anyway, to unlock Gako, you really just have to be lucky. You can hold up soldiers and make them shake out their belongings. What? If if one of them drops a Gakko, you got the guy. Or at least that's the way I think you get them. I'm not entirely sure. It's completely arbitrary how you get Gakko. Anyway, he has an S in traps and decent scores otherwise. But really, he is... He is one of the less useful characters. One of the special characters, I should say. I told you the guy has problems. He just sits there and lets himself get shot in the face. I don't know what's wrong with him, honestly. Or with his comrade there who just kind of wants to follow him everywhere. Damn it, we lost one. Select the next soldier immediately. Will do, Raj. Roy. Whatever your name is. Our next soldier happens to be Ocelot, though. Ocelot... You have to get both Eva and Sokolov, and then follow a lot of steps. Of course, I'll be posting this in the thread, as I said, so don't worry, you'll not be missing much. Uh, you can't, unfortunately, as far as I know, spin his revolvers around. It just doesn't happen. So obviously this isn't Ocelot. Anyway, of course, he comes equipped with a, a single-action army, and he has an S and pistols. Another thing he has is the job's best suited for a spy. Of course. Then there's Zero, who is a politician. Of course, politicians allow you to speed up the amount of time it takes to recruit soldiers from the prison. He comes pre-equipped with a uh, shoddy, but uh, you can't quite get him through normal gameplay, I found. From, from what I know, at least. You can only obtain him through a code. But that's quite all right, because it doesn't matter ultimately. But you can you you can at least say you can play as the biggest asshole in the entire series. So that's something. I mean, look at him—he's just an asshole. But I will say that coat of his is awfully nice. I mean, look at it. Just look at it. Huh? Who's that? Huh? Ah! Uh, another thing that special characters have is if they've uh, previously appeared, they actually, uh, they actually have their voice actors from olden times. Next up is Taliko from Metal Gear Acid. You get her from waiting until like December something of 1971, which is, I might add, a whole year after you've been on San Geronimo. So it is ultimately a big old time waster. Taliko has an S in pistols and comes pre-equipped with an Uzi. That's pretty much all that's special about her. 
fans of Metal Gear Acid may, I guess, enjoy her appearance here, but really, I don't know. I mean, look at that outfit. It looks like she's got rubber coils for up sleeves there. Rubber tubing. Something. I mean, look at it. And lastly, but definitely not leastly, least, I don't know, is Venus from Metal Gear Acid 2. She isn't the least useful, but is definitely not the most useful. She comes with A's across the board in stats, and is pre-equipped with a knife. Uh, a little note about Taliko and Venus, if you have saves from Metal Gear Acid or Acid 2, you get one or the other, depending on which one you have, of course. If you finish the game and then start a new one, you automatically get her. Them. So that's nice. If you, for some reason, keep around a save from Metal Gear Acid and play Portable Ops. Anyway, that's, that's pretty much that, so... I'd like to thank everyone for watching again, and for all my co-hosts, Loon, Shin Dragon, and Killer MC, I'd like to thank you for watching... Again, again. Redundancy. Hey. Anyway, see you guys later.